Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in the Art Gallery of Algoma's Winter Wonderland video series. My name's Audrey and today I'll be teaching you how to make two really cool projects that are perfect for the winter season. Today's theme is snowflakes. First we'll be using watercolor techniques to make a lovely snowflake piece. Next we'll be using coffee filters and dyeing them to create beautiful snowflake cutouts. So without further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the watercolor painting. The supplies you will need to create your painting will be watercolor paper, a set of watercolor paints, a white crayon, some paint brushes, a cup of water, clear tape, some coarse salt, this will be used for a salting technique, and a frame if you wish to frame your final piece. Some additional supplies you'll need if you wish to frame it include a pencil and a pair of scissors. Let's begin! First, ensure that your watercolor paper is your desired size before beginning. If you want to frame your piece upon completing it, measure out the paper so that it will fit the size of your frame. A super easy way to do this is by taking apart your frame and using the paper that came inside as a guide. Use a pencil to trace around this paper and cut your page to the proper size. Before painting, it's also helpful to tape down your watercolor paper in order to prevent the edges from curling once it gets wet. You may want to have another scrap piece of paper or a tablecloth underneath to prevent a mess. Now we'll take our white crayon and draw some snowflakes onto the paper, creating something called a wax resist. The wax from the crayon will repel our wet paint, leaving our snowflakes white once we add color. Be sure to press down hard enough with your crayon so that you get an even line that will be visible once we add paint. I recommend drawing your snowflakes in a range of different sizes and changing up your lines a bit. After all, no two snowflakes are alike. Also, try to place your snowflakes randomly throughout your page as opposed to drawing them all in a perfect line. This will help you to create a more pleasing composition and will make your piece look a bit more realistic. After you've drawn on your snowflakes, you can begin experimenting with different watercolor techniques over top to paint your sky. I think this painting turns out really neat if you use a range of different cool colors like blue and purple tones. You may want to mix in some pinks and reds as well, as if you're painting the sky at sunset. These colors all work really nicely together since they're found next to each other on the color wheel. Dip your paintbrush into the water, pick up a bit of paint, and gently brush the paint onto your surface to create a wash. When your color fades from light to dark, this is known as a graded wash. You'll want to find a good ratio of paint to water so that your color goes on smoothly without having the water pool on the surface. You'll want to ensure that your colors are dark enough to create contrast between your snowflakes and the paint. After you've brushed on your wash, you can try out a salting technique to create more texture. Simply sprinkle on your coarse salt while the paint is a bit wet so that it can absorb some of the color. Now, set your painting aside to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll move on to dyeing the coffee filters for our snowflake cutouts. The supplies you will need for this project will be coffee filters, washable markers, I recommend using similar colors as we used in our watercolor paintings, a cup of water, a small measuring spoon, a paper plate or tray for dyeing the filters, a separate tray for drying, and a pair of scissors. Our first step is to draw patterns on our coffee filters with washable marker. Be sure to have something underneath during this step, like a plate or a scrap piece of paper, because the marker will run through the coffee filter. If you're looking to dye more than one at a time with the same colors, you can stack two or three coffee filters on top of each other at a time. Once you add the water later on, the color will run through and dye all of them the same colors, even though the one on top will turn out slightly brighter than the ones underneath. Once you've drawn on your patterns, put your coffee filters on your plate, take some water in your measuring spoon, and slowly drop it onto the filters. Watch as the colors blend together. Now, transfer your wet coffee filters to a separate tray to dry. This can take a few hours, or you may have to leave them overnight. Once your coffee filters have dried, you can pull them apart. Now we'll move on to the folding and cutting process. You'll want to fold your coffee filter into six segments, since snowflakes have six sides. To do this, begin by folding your coffee filter in half. Then, fold it into thirds by folding it over once like so, and then folding it over itself. Now, take your scissors and cut some designs into your coffee filter. You can have a lot of fun with this part in order to make the snowflake your own. Here are a couple of things to keep in mind while cutting. If you cut off this tip, it will create a hole in the center of your snowflake. If you trim along the top edge, it will change the shape of the outer edge of your snowflake. You can leave it round, cut it bumpy, 
or make a hexagon shape by cutting a straight line. Cutting designs into the other two edges will create shapes within your snowflake. You can try triangles, diamonds, hearts, and so much more. In order to create a shape, only cut out half of that shape. When you open your coffee filter back up, you'll see the whole symmetrical shape. Once you've finished cutting, unfold your coffee filter and take a look at your awesome snowflake. Now that our snowflakes are completed, we'll return to our watercolor painting and move on to the final steps. Once it's completely dry, brush the salt off your piece to see the cool textures it's created. Now you can frame your finished piece if you'd like and check out your beautiful creation. And there we have it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you were able to follow along. If you liked it, please hit the like button and consider following the Art Gallery of Algoma if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching!